Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about how to practice scales musically. In last week's video I introduced three principles and the first of those is always be musical. So what do I even mean when I talk about being musical or playing musically? It, it is really just about saying something with the music and not practicing notes just for the notes sake. A lot of times people will start their day by practicing technical exercises but they won't do anything to think about music. They think of, of, of the technique as completely separate from the repertoire. And there are actually things that you can do when you practice technical exercises like scales that will help enhance your musicality and that will make them less like rote technical exercises. So I have five suggestions for you today that you can try in your own scale practice. My first suggestion is to listen for a good tone. This is really important. A lot of times students come to me and they've practiced their scales and they will play with a very weak tone using weak fingers and just like really not much substance to the sound. Like just very shallow, not much to the sound. You can just use your ear when you're playing and make a robust tone, make a pretty sound, make a sound that sounds like you're singing. So I know that sounds like really elementary, but it's amazing what a big difference it makes when you set the intention of listening for the tone quality when you're doing technical exercises, because that will start to make that automatic for you when you are working on your repertoire, that you will always be thinking about the sound and the sound quality, which is the number one consideration when it comes to musicality. My second suggestion for you, make sure that your hands are always playing together. Again, a lot of times a, some, a student will have, like come in maybe with six different scales that they've worked on that week and then they'll play it for me like this. I mean, you can hear the hands are slightly off, but it's easy if it's you playing to get used to that and to just kind of not realize even that there are two separate attacks going on, right? So the difference between that's the, the one hand is, is playing a little bit earlier than the other versus, right? You hear one attack. So make sure that when you practice scales, you're hearing a single attack when both hands play together. Not, right? So, so listening that your hands are playing together. My third suggestion for you to practice your musicianship and musicality when you practice scales is to practice always using dynamics of some kind. So the most obvious um, and great place to start would be to start quietly and crescendo as you grow and then diminuendo as you go down. Very often in music, when there's a rising line, it's often accompanied by a crescendo. So it makes sense to practice that when you're practicing scales. I'm just gonna do a, a two octave scale here. You can do a longer scale. And then coming down. And one thing that, pe that often happens is there's often a tendency to rush when you get louder. And so I would suggest putting on a metronome and then just making sure that you, as you get louder, you don't actually get faster. So. Coming down. And this doesn't only practice getting loud and getting soft, but what it can do is really help you practice pacing a crescendo or a diminuendo so that you're really focusing on a very, very even crescendo and a very even diminuendo. Now, of course, you can practice the opposite. You can practice starting loud, diminuendoing as you go up and then growing louder as you come down. So that sounds more like this. So you 
can do that also over multiple octaves. Another way you can practice your musicianship is to vary your articulation. Articulation, which means how short or long a note is, is a key component of musicianship because if notes are connected, they're gonna have a different character and a different mood than if everything is detached. And so you can practice all the notes staccato. Notice in that I also did a little crescendo and diminuendo. You want to try to avoid just flat, everything totally flat. You want to avoid just because that's just like notes. But you want to always kind of create some kind of shape, even if it's detached. Now what you can also do is, is legato in one hand, staccato in the other. vice versa. So there's a ways to vary the articulation as well. And what that will do is it will just give you more skills and more ability when you are actually practicing your repertoire to play it in different ways and to kind of assimilate the, the notation on the page and to be more aware of the articulation and how to incorporate that. And then I just want to point out that scales are passage work. Passage work is often virtuosic and it appears often in repertoire in places that are intended to seem effortless and kind of where the, where the music sweeps up to the top and sweeps down. And so it can be very helpful musically to practice your scales and think that you're sweeping up to the top and sweeping down from the top. So for example, So in, what I mean by that is there's no real stopping place in the middle, right? I'm not thinking. Right, that's not, that doesn't have any sweep at all and it doesn't have any real musicality to it. And so you want to kind of cultivate that feeling that the scales have a musical meaning of their own and to practice sweeping up and sweeping down. Always be thinking in terms of character. Think in terms of mood. You can play scales in a delighted way. <laughs> you can play scales in a in a sorrowful way. And it can be fun to experiment with that in your practice. So those are a few of my strategies on how to practice scales musically. I really think it's important to practice technical exercises in a musical way and not completely separate that from the work you do in your repertoire. I hope this works out for you. If you wanna contact me, my name is Kate Boyd at thepianoprof.com. Feel free to leave a comment in the, in the comments and I will also get back to you that way. I'll see you next week. Happy practicing.